the fabric lake house connector in azure data factory and azure synapse analytics allows seamless integration with microsoft fabric lake house which enable data engineers to directly read and write data from lake house dev tables the connector supports scalable data transformation and ingestion workflow which enhances data lake and warehouse interoperability in this video, I'm going to show you how to read data from ADLS Gen 2 to Fabric Lake House and how to write data from Lake House to ADLS Gen 2 using the Lake House connector. So let's get started. As usual, let's take a look at the sample data set and the files. I'm going to come to the CSV and in the CSV, this is sales 2015 that contains the order date spanning across to the sales columns. And then I've got these 20 records. I'm going to come to this folder that contains the sales 2015 to sales 2024. So we're going to load this data in a new container in the already provisioned ADLS Gen 2. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come here and then I'm going to use the ADLS Gen 2 cornerstone hierarchical namespace enable storage account. I'm going to go to containers under data storage and they want to create a new container. I'm going to call this one data and then I can click on create. And then I can open that newly created container and use the upload functionality. And I'm going to browse through the local file and then I'm going to see the sales2015.csv. I'm going to hold down the shift key and then use the down arrow key to select downwards and press open on the laptop. And then I can click on upload. So the sales2015 to 2024 has been provisioned in this newly created data container of the AD List Gen 2. So we want to go ahead and create a service principle which is really important to authenticate and authorize access to fabric lake house so i'm going to come to this tab and i'm going to come to the menu and set for microsoft entra id so in entra id on the left hand side we're going to create a new app registration click on that so for the purpose of this video i've deleted all my apps so i'm going to show you everything so that you can get the angle of the whole thing so i'm going to create a new registration and i'm going to call this one my app you can use whatever you like as the name and this is going to be within my personal organizational directory within my personal tenant so i'm going to click on register so this has been registered and i can see in the overview we have the display name the application client id which we're going to need in the azure data factory later and then we're going to also see the object id and the tenant id so we want to go ahead and create a secret in the certificate and secret tab so click on that and then i want to create a new secret I'm just going to call this on my secret and then I can click on add and then we're going to say the secret of the service principal. We're going to need this later on. Now, I'm going to quickly duplicate this tab because I'm going to need the ID, the client ID and this secret. So let's duplicate. Okay, so I can save this here because, you know, once I lose sight of this, if this is not copied and saved somewhere, maybe in Azure Key Vault, I'm not going to be able to see it again. So I can say this is the duplicated and this has now been asterisked. So I'm going to come to the overview and I'm going to need this later on the client ID. And let's go ahead and open the already provisioned Azure Data Factory. So this is Cornerstone Analytics Azure Data Factory. I'm going to click on Launch Studio. And in the Azure Data Factory, we're going to create linked services to the source and the destination. And then we're going to create a data set and then we're going to create our pipeline. And then we're going to use the link out connector. So I'm going to expand this and click on manage. I want to create a new link service to the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. And I'm going to use the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 linked service as the name. And I'm going to maintain the whole thing. This is fine. The account key is fine. And I'm going to use my subscription. And then I'm going to choose the name of the storage account, ADLS Gen 2. And I'm going to click on test connection, and this is going to work fine, straightforward. So click on create. We want to create the linked service to the destination, which is the Azure or Microsoft Fabric. Now, before we do that, I'm going to come to this tab. I've got this ADF to Fabric Link House workspace with no item created. Now, it is important we also provision the Link House before we go back to the linked service of the Lake House connector. So I'm going to click on this name item and then I'm going to set for Lake House and I'm going to click on that and give this a name. I'm going to call this one data sales or whatever you like as the name and I'm going to click on create. So this is going to be provisioned and then we're going to see that in the tables and files we have no data. 
which is fine. So I'm going to come back here to the Azure Data Factory and then create a new linked service. So I'm going to set for Lake House. So I can say Microsoft Fabric Lake House. Click on that and then click on Continue. I'm going to use the Lake House linked service as the meaningful name. And I'm going to maintain the tenant which is Cornerstone Analytics and the same tenant I'm using in this environment, which is um, Cornerstone Analytics 1. Now, I'm going to provide the name of the workspace. Now, the name of the workspace is ADF to Fabric. So I'm going to come here and set for ADF and that's it. So ADF to Fabric. And then I'm going to provide the name of the newly created link house, which is the data cells. Now, I'm going to scroll down. And we're going to provide the tenant ID, which is already supplied automatically. So we're going to provide the service principal ID. So I'm going to come here, and that's the reason why this is duplicated. So this is the client ID that we need. It's the same thing as service principal ID. So I'm going to paste that, and when I scroll down, we also need the service principal key. Now, we can just type it you know, in this box, just copy and paste. But in the production environment, we highly recommend using the Azure keyword. You can actually store that in Azure keyword. Uh, but I'm going to cover that in the future video. But for now, I'm just going to do copy paste. So I'm going to come here, copy this secret, and then come back here and I'm going to paste in this box the key. So I'm going to test connection. Now, this is going to fail because the workspace do not or is not able to access the newly created My App registration. So we're going to see how to fix that problem in a moment. Okay, you can see it failed as expected. Now, how do we solve this problem? It is super easy. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go to the very workspace itself, which is the ADF to Fabric Lake House. And I'm going to come to Manage Access. And then we can see I'm the owner in this, in the admin in this case. I'm going to add people or groups. And I'm going to set for the um, My App that we just created. So My App Service Principal. And I'm going to grant this to be an admin. I think you can also grant member and contributor. This is fine, but I'm going to just grant an, as an admin because this is my personal tenant. So this has been added to this workspace now. The service principal can actually access the lake house within this ADF to fabric um, lake house workspace. So when I come back here and click on test connection, this is going to be working fine now. Okay, so this worked now. So I'm going to click on create. So we've created the linked services to the source and the destination. So I'm going to come to the auto tab and then I'm going to create data set to the source and the sync. So I'm going to click on this ellipses and I want to create a new data set. And I'm going to set for Azure Data Lake Storage and Tool. Now, don't forget our data is comma separated value CSV. So I'm going to stick with this deleted text as the format and I'm going to call this on delimited text source data and select the linked service we've created for the Azure Data Lake Storage and Tool. So I'm going to browse through the container that is holding the data, which is data container. And I'm going to see the save 2015 to 2024.csv. So I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to maintain the my first row is indeed contain error and we're going to maintain this and click on OK. So we've created the data set to the source. We want to go ahead and create data set to the sync that is the Microsoft Lake House. So I'm going to click on this ellipsis again and I want to create a new data set. Now I'm going to set for Lake House. Now we're going to have two options. We have the Microsoft Fabric Lake House files and Microsoft Fabric table. Now let me just tell you the difference between the two. Now when I choose to use the files, now the data will automatically be provisioned in this files menu here. But when I choose the table, the data will be provisioned as a delta table in this lake house. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the table and I'm going to refer to this DBO schema. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to use I'm going to use the table connector and then click on continue. So I'm going to maintain the name and I'm going to click on this linked service and pick the linked service we've created. So I'm going to set for this now. We don't have the table name, so I can easily create this manually. Now I'm going to provide the schema name DBO and I'm going to call this on sales data as the name of the new table. So I'm going to choose none for the import schema and then click OK. So this has been created. Now we can create the pipeline, the copy data activity. So I'm going to come here and then create a new 
pipeline. So I'm going to search for copy data activity and drag into the designer. Let's just collapse this to maintain the view of the whole thing. I can give this a meaningful name. Let's just call this one um, right to um, lake house. Or let me just use underscore right to lake house pipeline. So I'm going to close these properties now for the copy data. I'm going to give this meaningful name. Okay, data movement or whatever you like. And then we want to come to the source. Now, in the source, I'm going to move this up a little bit. Now, we do need to create another data set. This has been created already. So I'm going to pick from the delimited text source data. So click on that. And then I'm going to choose, because of time, click on this wildcard file path. And this is going to be what we need in order to successfully configure the source environment. So we want to go to the sync, the destination. So I'm going to choose the link house table. And then we have this option to choose the table action such as append or overwrite. So I'm just going to stick with this default append. Now I'm going to click on this validate and let's see. So we can see your pipeline has been validated and no error were found. So I'm going to close this for now. So let's click on debug and see what happens. Amazing. So you can see the pipeline succeeded. Now let's go ahead and check this out in the Microsoft Fabric Lakehouse. I'm going to come here and I can use this and um, refresh to refresh the lake house and here we go so we have the sales data now when i come back here i can even click on this to see what's going on so we can see the data red and then we can see the rows red 200 rows and then this is the rows written to the destination so we can also see some other information such as the duration it took about just 25 seconds and we can see the throughput we can see the start time and so on and so forth so this worked pretty far and when i click on this this is now a delta table that we can query in the sql analytics endpoint so let me course expand this and we can see all the table and we can play around and start querying data okay so this is how we can write data from the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 to Microsoft Fabric um, Lake House. So let's see how we can write this data into another Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 container. So I'm going to come here using the same uh, Azure Data Factory. So I'm going to expand this environment. Now I can create another pipeline. Click on this create a new pipeline. So I'm going to call this one, um, so write, um, to ADLS Gen 2, ADLS Gen 2. So I'm going to close the properties for now. Now I'm going to use the copy data activity also, and I'm just going to maintain this name as it is. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to click on the source. Now the source is going to be the lake house table, and then I can go to the sync, the destination, and I'm going to write this in form into. Um, now, we can even write this data as a delimited text or as a parquet file. Now, if we want to do that, I'm going to create another data set. So I'm going to quickly create another data set. And then I'm going to search for Azure Data Lake Storage in 2. And I'm going to use the parquet file format. And I'm going to maintain this name and use the same link size. I don't need to recreate that. That's not required data. And I'm going to turn this off. So I'm going to use none for the import schema. So click on OK. And then we can also, you know, use the copy behavior. We have different kind of things like the flatten hierarchy. We have merge files, and then we have preserve hierarchy. I've, I've covered this in one of my videos. You can always watch on my YouTube channel. So this has been configured. Now I can click on validate to check for any potential error or if there's anything I miss out. So this looks good. I can click on debug. All right. So this is going to start running, and let's see whether it's going to be successful or not amazing so this succeeded now i'm going to come back to this container um the adls gen 2 and then i'm going to click on refresh so we're going to see the data and i can see actually we actually loaded the data into the data we created initially but not to worry so we can see we have the parquet file we have the parquet file for each of the data that we um, loaded into the ADLS Gen 2. So this is how we can write data from the Azure Data Lake Story Gen 2 to Microsoft Fabric Lake House. And I can also write from the Lake House to the ADLS Gen 2. 
I trust you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, comment, share, and follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.